from major life change to Mickey Mouse ears. I can't wait to recap this year. This is the best of The Rachel Cruz Show. Hey guys, and welcome to The Rachel Cruz Show. It's Christmas time and 2019 is coming to an end. And I really hope that my show has helped you guys make progress towards your money goals this year. We had a lot of great episodes and guests, and I wanted to share some of my favorite moments with you. I also wanted to show you some of the things that you didn't see that will for sure make you laugh. So let's get right to it. First up was one of my favorite couples I had on the show. Rosanna and Jeremy were so much fun. Their gazelle intensity made me so proud and they're tackling their debt with a passion, but that isn't stopping them from having so much fun with their family. Check it out. I was just living a life that was just, you could just feel the weight of the world on my shoulders. I just started getting fed up with the way things were. We just didn't feel like we had any freedom. And I also didn't really know like where was we have this money, where is it going? We're trying to get to a place in life where we can breathe. Our church, uh, they just put up on, on the screens, hey, we're doing Financial Peace University. We just looked at each other and said, hey, we just gotta do it. It was, a, it was almost as a matter of fact. It was something about the word financial and peace. Was, it, was, it was perfectly named, it really was, yeah. because I wasn't having peace. Our finances, were, there was nothing peaceful about it. And even though it was hard coming to terms with okay, we need to make some really big changes here. It felt hard, but- we, but we were up for it. We were like, yeah. man, because what we were doing was just not working. So once we got through the financial piece, we immediately, the BMW had to go, the motorcycle had to go. If we haven't used it in the last month, we're, so we're selling it. It's out. And we did. We started just snowballing. paying everything off, snowballing. As that was happening, you could just, you could feel the, the, the freedom. Oh, you could it felt feel amazing. The, oh, it still yeah. feels amazing. It still feels pretty good. Watching Dave's YouTube channel and you constantly seeing people screaming their necks Next off, like I'm out, I'm out, I'm free, debt free. And I'm like, yeah, I'm you like, want to nah, be those people. You want to be those people so desperately. There's a sacrifice in the beginning that you have to make. But the the thing was is that our goal, we didn't want to go back to where we were. So making that sacrifice for that short amount of time was completely worth it. This is our new excitement in life. Mm -hmm. You know, the cars and the stuff and all that. That was fun. But this is more this thrilling is because we're achieving. That something phenomenal. Yeah, you know, when baby says too, so this is still a journey to go, but man, we're not where we used to be. They're so fun. Oh, I'm hoping to get them back on for an update sometime soon. They're just great. All right, up next is Mignon. Mignon's story was amazing and so inspiring. She hit rock bottom when she couldn't even pay her electric bill, but she listened to God's prompting and ended up turning a cupcake into a multi-million dollar business. Here's her story. I remember feeling desperate and broken and hopeless and feeling like, why is it that everybody else can make it and we can't? I was a stay-at-home mom, drowning in debt and brokenness, losing everything that we had. Figuring out how to make it was what my life was about to depend on. I was listening to the Dave Ramsey show and I heard people screaming on the show, we are debt free and I wanted that. And I heard him telling people that they could have a bake sale. And I thought, what if you had a bake sale every single day? But I didn't know how to bake, but I had a secret weapon. It was my grandmother. And I said, Grandma, look, I need a recipe. It was the first successful thing that I ever baked. And it was when my neighbor across the street, she said, I want to order cupcakes for all of my clients. That was going to be like 600 cupcakes. All I had was $5 left, and I hadn't even fed the family, and we were a family of eight. But I wanted to do something different because, you know, I was tired of being crazy, expecting a different result. And I marched myself out that door and I bought everything that I could buy with that $5 and I started baking. I turned that five into 60 that day. And I turned that 60 into 600 by the end of the week. And I've turned that 600 into over $10 million in sales. I opened this bakery with a KitchenAid mixer and a dorm-sized refrigerator because that's what I could afford to do. And now the cupcake collection is over 5 million cupcakes sold. The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. 
And it's in that one step forward that you begin to find that everything else begins to take its shape. You just have to do what you can do. I'm going to live like it depends on God, but I'm going to work like it depends on me. Oh, she's so full of joy. Oh, I love how she never gave up and now she's paying it forward. All right, we all know how much I love The Bachelor. And this year, I actually brought someone on the show who was a contestant on The Bachelor, and she ended up being The Bachelorette. Yes, Caitlin Bristow gave me all of The Bachelor inside scoop, and it was fantastic. Okay, so when it comes to the show, yes. I have so many questions. Most I, people do. I cannot wait to hear all this. Okay. okay. Um, because when it comes to the financial side, mm -hmm. as a viewer, that's like somewhat of the lens I look through because I can't help it. It's just mm -hmm. like part of like how my mind works. So I'm watching it and I'm like, okay, you were on the side of the contestants mm -hmm. of The Bachelor. Yeah. And then you were The Bachelorette. Right. So you have two different perspectives, perspectives which are pretty yes. different, right? Very. Okay. So when it comes to what you pay for, mm -hmm. I'm going to be so nosy here, but no, what you pay for. It's interesting stuff. Yeah. So when you're a contestant, like what? What is provided for you, and what do you have to pay for? You pay for everything, and nothing is provided for you. Like seriously, I, I was living in Vancouver, and to even get um, a flight to go down, you know, to, for one of my first auditions, yeah. I was taking care of it. I put myself up in the hotels. No way. Yeah, yeah. They're just like, if you want this, come get it. But so all your clothes that you're yes. wearing on one on ones and all of that, or group dates. It was crazy the, the amount of money that I spent just to go into the show because you don't know how long you're going to last. You could yeah. either be home night one or you could be there for a solid nine weeks. And it's like you got to think of rose ceremony dresses and yes. heels and jewelry and these things aren't ex or aren't cheap. It's, totally. it's quite expensive and everything. It's it's crazy what goes into it. And, and yeah, you don't get anything. Yeah. Do people go into debt for this stuff? Oh, I did. Like, yeah. Yeah. I don't know how you don't. I mean, I was working as at a restaurant. I yeah. taught spin classes on the side. I was living in Vancouver, paying yeah. ridiculous rent. But yeah, you got it's it's a lot to think about when you're going away for that long and yes. national television and what everybody puts into it in the show. Yeah, no help. Yes. Okay, so when you are the bachelorette, mm -hmm. is it the opposite? Like everything's provided I think, for you? I think I brought my pajamas <gasps> and that was it. Seriously. Just a comfy pair of PJs because everything is taken care of if you're the lead. You just pick from, you know, you have wardrobe pickouts every week and this is what I'm going to wear. And they can't tell you what the dates are. So they'll be like, you might be in a chili helicopter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, possibly in the mountains. speaking, <laughs> it's a helicopter. So they'll give you ideas. But um, yeah, all wardrobe to choose from. There's a stylist. There's a hair and makeup artist. So it's like polar opposites. Right. Being a contestant to being like the lead. Yes. So fascinating. Caitlin is awesome. Our conversation was so much longer than that. So make sure to check out the podcast of The Rachel Cruz Show to hear all of it. Okay, Ian Cron. Yes, he was so great. He is an Enneagram expert. And Enneagram is like one of my favorite things ever. It's all about your personality type. So Ian came on to talk about the money habits for different personality types, and I loved it. So here's Ian. I would love for you to go through the numbers and how each personality interacts with money. Yeah. Because it's how we all interact. And it's interesting when you put your personality to it, what unfolds. Yeah. And you know what? I've thought about this topic a lot. And so I've been really excited about doing this oh, show. Okay. <laughs> so because no, I have. I've been thinking to myself like, <laughs> oh my gosh, like understanding economics or personal finance, um, your relationship with money through the lens of personality. Yes. Like actually, if you know your personality type, you can avoid a lot of problems. You can spot them before they undo you. Yes. Right? It's good. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's true. Right? It's true. Yes. All right, let's talk about ones. All right. I have not met a lot of ones who are in debt. Yes. They're very concerned about budgeting. It's good. Now, the trap for them could be moving from responsibility with money to rigidity mm. with money. So All right. good. Twos. Generosity to the max. Mm. And serve. And they want to serve. Now, the problem with that is, is overgiving, right? Yes. Okay, threes. The upside is they are goal-crushing machines. They, they get things done, productive yep. as heck. The downside is, is they could um, fall into the trap of using money as a way to project an image of success. Totally. Yes. Right? Oh, yeah. So fours are tricky 
fours might think that budgeting is beneath them. You know, I'm an artiste, you know, yes. and I, I'm, I'm above such mundane topics like finances. That's so good. Right? Yes, yes. Fives. A problem for a five can be that um, they can spend a lot of time researching what to do with money. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. How to invest and how to do all this stuff and not actually execute and on the plan. And go through it. Uh-huh. Uh, sixes, you know, uh, these loyalists are chronic warriors. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what a pitfall for them can be they're always looking to outside authorities to make decisions for them. And that could be a problem around finances, right? Interesting. Because yep. there's some good people out there and there are not some not so good people yep. out there, yep. right? Sevens. Having fun. Oh, Just the impulsivity, <laughs> though, it can get them into so much trouble with money. And and really, it can. Like, yes, yes. I have seen more credit card debt around sevens because it's like fun, spontaneity. Oh. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. Let's just take this trip. Let's have that meal. Let's. This is right. fine. We'll do it. Yeah. Yep. Now with eights, they're all in or they're all out. They yes. go big or they go home. Yes. It's you know what I mean. Oh yeah. Uh, so they can gobble up life and money can fly out the door. So nines, wonderful sweethearts, they get easily distracted. Budgeting's hard for nines because they mm. they're easily distracted. They get going on a budget and then they suffer mission drift. Mm. Yes. So, so every good. type has its own lens through which I think it understands and sees money, and we're yep. just. Scratching the oh, surface yes, totally. of what we could talk about totally. finances and types. Oh, so good. And I will have to have you back. Oh, the Enneagram. If you don't know it, you should. Okay, you guys, I also love Costco. They have some really good quality generic products that are identical to the name brand version. Some of these really shocked me. So here they are Kirkland Signature Batteries, you guys, are made by Duracell. That's right but you buy the generic and save money. Kirkland's Signature Coffee, you won't believe it, but it's true, roasted by Starbucks. Mm -hmm. Kirkland's Pet Food, which I'm not gonna pick up, because you know, I don't wanna show off how strong I am, is made by Diamonds. And if you've ever bought Diamond Dog Food, you know it's great quality, but it's really pricey. But Kirkland's is 30% cheaper. And the last one, that absolutely shocked me, but rumor has it that Kirkland's Professional Salon Formula, moisturizer, shampoo, and conditioner are made by Pureology. <gasps> Ladies, I use Pureology and I love it. In Costco's products, these, they're like $9.99. And Pureology costs like 65 bucks? Okay, I will say, I couldn't find definite proof anywhere on Purology or Costco to admit this, but the ingredients are exactly the same and everywhere on the internet says that it's true. So it must be right, right? If you guys know of any others, I'd love to hear them. All right, before we get to my next favorite moment, which may or may not have to do with Disney, I wanna to talk to you about something that you need to do for the new year for your family, and that is to get term life insurance. Listen, this is one of the most simple things that you can do to make sure your family is taken care of. The fact that people go on with life without life insurance, it kind of drives me crazy because I'm like, seriously, if something were to happen to you and someone is dependent upon your income, what's gonna happen to them? Like, do you think about that? It's not fun to think about. No, we're gonna talk about Disney and get excited and all that stuff, happiness later. But for real, this is something that is so inexpensive, it's so easy to get, and that is term life insurance. Xander Insurance is what I recommend. This is what Winston and I use, and I love it because I know if something were to happen to Winston or myself, that our girls, our family, are gonna be taken care of. And now our little boy, yes, our family's growing, which makes me more paranoid to make sure that everything is good, right? It's like my mama bear coming out, like we're all good. And that's what term life insurance does. It gives you peace of mind. And again, it's super easy. We recommend getting 10 to 12 times your annual income. So all you have to do is go to xander.com, get a quote today because they do all the shopping, all the hard work, everything for you. It is so easy. Don't go into the new year without making sure you have term life insurance. All right, I can't do the best of show without this one. Disney, yes. We did an entire episode on Disney. And it'd be just kind of my dream if we just turned this whole show into like a Disney show. What do you think? I mean, I'd be living my best life. I think it'd be great. <laughs> okay, here are a couple of my favorite moments from that episode. All right, keep your hands and feet inside the vehicle at all times because this mine train is about to take off. 
here's the list. Number one, bring your own stroller. Disney charges $15 a day. Listen, lug that stroller around. We did that with Amelia, it's great. Number two, don't buy a ticket for every single day that you're there, especially if you're there for a week. Your kids are gonna get tired and they're gonna wanna enjoy a day at the hotel's pool. Number three, the best part of the day to ride the rides is during the fireworks because no one is in line. So experience the fireworks, they're life-changing, but then the next night, like, go right all the rides, it's great. Number four, buy Disney gift cards on a discount. So check your local warehouse clubs like Costco and Sam's. Number five, buy your mouse ears beforehand on Etsy like these or online so you can wear them to the park because the ones in the park are expensive. Number six, arrive before the park opens. Okay, the parks are way less crowded in the morning. So make sure to book your fast passes, those reservations later in the day when the lines are longer. Number seven, use the envelope system for your kids' snacks and souvenirs. Studies show that you spend up to 100% more when you use your card or your Disney Magic Band versus cash. So people, use cash while you're there. You have to have reality. And that just brings you back to reality because you're gonna be in this magical land. Reality is the cash, use cash. Number eight, if you go before your kids are three, they actually get into the park for free. Love it. Number nine, make sure to bring sunscreen and Band-Aids, those kind of things, because you're gonna pay a premium for those in the park. Number 10, skip the park hopper tickets and only go to one park per day. Next, you can use the photo pass photographers, so you don't have to buy all the packages with their pictures. You can actually hand them your camera or your phone and they'll take the pictures for you. They're so great at that. Number 12, use discounts if you're military, AARP, or AAA. Number 13, don't listen to the timeshare pitch to get the discounted tickets, people. Mm -mm. No, 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 you are there because you have saved up for this Disney trip. Don't sit through that, that stuff, no, no. Number 14, Disney has now tiered their pricing by season, so travel in the off seasons for lighter crowds and cheaper ticket prices. Oh, Disney, it's just one of the best. And if you guys are going, you should definitely check out the full episode for some great money and time-saving tips. I'll put a link in the show notes. All right, now you may think I come in here, I put on my money teaching hat, and I get these episodes to you without any flaws, but that's just not true. Sometimes I am not on my game. I'm going again, I'm starting from the top. Take three, take three, take four, take four, sorry. Okay, here we go. Have you all seen the new Breaking Bad? I love Breaking Bad. We're going back through watching Friends. Pivot, pivot. Pivot. Best episode ever. I wanna be home, in my bed, watching Billions. Oh, the cold chicken. Mm, mm, mm. Uh-oh. <laughs> I mean, if she like brought in queso, I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> Or a burger. Oh, like a burger sounds like so good. Raise hands emoji. <sighs> I can't breathe. How are we rolling? Like a robot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Help me. Okay, here we go. I used to pray for Justin Bieber. <laughs> I love him so much. Hey, that was not a joke. I'm being serious. I know I'm not crazy. I know I'm not crazy. One, two, duh. Wait, what? As a believer, I believe. And I figured this episode was super. Man, my earring. You are older than your parents. No, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm just talking about my doctor. I'm just sitting here talking. It's what they pay me to do. <laughs> Quiet on set. Quiet on set. Director Rachel. See, I told you. Listen, it's not all business. We have fun around here. Okay, well, I'm so glad that you guys tuned into this show to see some of the best moments of the year. Now, to find all of these episodes and more, head over to rachelcruz.com. Make sure to watch in the new year because we are going to hit the ground running with some great money-saving tips you can't afford to miss. Like next episode, we're gonna talk all about budgeting. Well, Merry Christmas, you guys. Happy New Year. And remember to take control of your money and create a life you love. <laughs>